So sure about what, Dad? About Carson. He doesn't stack up. To what? As a suspect. Don't put avocado on the burger. What? Simple is always best. Look, Carson killed Jordan and Atlanta. Then those two degenerates at Crazy Betty's motel. Hell, he even tried to kill you, didn't he? Have you forgotten that? But Carson was a coke dealer. Why would he want to kill his clients? And what would be his motive for killing Alana and Jordan and the Moorwood girl? It doesn't make sense, sir. I'm sorry. There you go again. Now you're piling hummus on top of the burger, too. What if he was punishing them? He knew Alana was cheating on her husband. He knew that Frank and Goldie were making porn. And who would know all that? Someone they knew. Someone they trusted. You mean like a drug dealer? Sir, a drug dealer with morals? Come on. All right, I read Brenda's magazine. Christmas, the number one holiday for people going nuts. That's motive enough for me. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to another instalment of Silent Night from 2012 in PCs where we take the movie Silent Night from 2012, we break up into five minute reviewable instalments um, and then I get a guest on to talk about those five minutes and then we mix up the release order so all bets are off. This could be the first episode, the one in the middle or the one at the end. Um, this is the very end one though, this is minutes 90 through to... I. 93 and 45 seconds or something uh, joining me on this episode the man who has once again on another one of these series landed the final installment which is let's be honest predominantly credits is my good buddy ricky morgan how's it going ricky oh i i, I don't think that's true at all folks prepare <laughs> grab hold clutch your mountain oysters because there's so much to talk about <laughs> in the last five minutes of this film and it's going to blow your mind. Well, we do get the killer reveal. So this is this is the big thing. Like, you've been all the way through this movie going, who is this killer? And you get it here for like less than three seconds screen time. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I'll be honest, it is a character you've never seen before. Um, yep. Which is not frustrating at all. It's just like happy, happy, happy time. So, um, with that in mind, we might as well get through this. This episode, ladies and gents, is going to be ridiculously short. Um, But, you know what? Like, I'm putting out so much content this month that a wee short episode is not a bad thing. Um, So, Ricky, um, (laughs) we, we jump in here at the 90 minute mark with burning bodies lying on the ground and the camera pans round to a kid sitting in a car watching them burn it then transitions to a man who has a burned face he's not dead he's just very badly burned (laughs) um and and, uh, he is looking at the back of a sun visor in his car where a picture of his family appears to be indicating that this might be the kid i don't know um and he puts that up and then drives out of the town past the sign that says Cryer, Wisconsin. Goodbye. Thanks for visiting. Please drive carefully. And credits. <laughs> That's it. If there is a recommended fifteen seconds to watch of this movie, this you know this this is it. <laughs> like, what's your opinion on like, like to, to, to try and squeeze like a couple of seconds out of the, of this episode? <laughs> What is your opinion on movies revealing killers that you've not seen throughout the movie? It usually makes me walk out of the theater. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so you're like me that way. Yeah, I mean, because it goes all the way back to, and I hate to beat the movie up, but Dern Scream 2, man. 
Yeah. I'm the mom of the guy from the first movie, and this other guy's just some guy said, yeah, I don't mind killing some people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> and it's... That's kind of what we get here. It's like, yeah, my my dad was nuts. He he burned up my mom. He burned himself up, and I saw it all. And that makes me want to kill people. Yeah. I guess. I, I mean, there's there's nothing to really tell you any different. So, yeah. But yeah, like like you said, the picture on the visor, and you're going, okay. Well, we we saw uh, Dewey Cox get burned up. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's definitely not Dewey Cox, right? Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a it's an immense frustration because I don't know who that scene's for. It's not <laughs> well, for the audience. Like I usually complain on my show all the time about how we over-explain things now. Yeah, we we have to get in such detail. But this is the other end of it yeah. where you're like, <laughs> uh, okay, you don't want explanation? Here you go. Are you are we sure this is not an Italian film? Because it sure feels like one. Yeah, it's it's the. <laughs> Is kind of it, like I, I suppose that, like what I was thinking just instantly in my head of of something like Bay of Blood, right? And right at the end, the kids kill the parents and kind of <laughs> like tee hee hee, but that's done tongue in cheek. Like the right. revealing here is like deadly serious. Like for a movie that has been very campy all the way through it, this is a like I saw my family burn, <laughs> and I, now I travel town to town, apparently like some sort of. And I, I, I rest a... for 11 months and then yeah. I clear my in <laughs> DC. He is Michael Myers, isn't he? This is Michael Myers who like fell into a river, slept for a year, and then woke up on Halloween for another killing spree. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, like to me, it's like if you can't, as a storyteller, if you can't be bothered like filling this out throughout the movie, like, yeah. can I be bothered with yeah. this ending? And the answer is no. I like it's it like it's it's a it's clearly something that they're like. I suppose like well, we, if we're killing all these people off, we kind of need to reveal who the killer is. Well, we've not set up anything throughout the movie. Uh, <laughs> well, right? you get you get one foreshadowing from one of the red herrings in this, yes. describing the story of you know this thing that happened all these years ago, yeah. which is kind of weird because it's in the same neighborhood or the same town, so. Is this guy really driving around from town to town, or is this just a new thing that he does at the end of this one? Because he's like, "Well, screw this! I really screwed this one up. I better go on somewhere else." Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And the, like I say, the movie doesn't like go out its way to explain anything either. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I if they would have, this is what it was missing. Instead of the the truck driving off at the end, and you see the 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 sign of the town where he's driving away, if it would have just shown him. As a kid looking out the window and seeing the dad burning, and it just went to a screen that said, "You've been watching Silent Night." <laughs> <laughs> Goblin starts playing. Um, the I mean, like the 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 insinuation here is he's moving on to the next town, which well, apparently yeah, is going to take him eleven months to drive to. Um, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's it's just. Yeah, it's le it's lazy, lazy, lazy writing. In fact, it's not even lazy writing. There is no writing there for for that one. It's just like it's a collective shrug, um, right. and which is yeah. once again how I feel at the end, which is a shame because it, it kind of is what the movie really needs is a totally batshit ending after that fight scene in the police station. Yeah, yeah, totally like, agree. It's totally anticlimactic, um, yeah. and I would love to spend more time beating it up, but. Let's not. Um, yeah, that that's the last five minutes. We do get a we, we we do get like a transition from a Christmas carol into a punk cover of a Christmas song, which is mm -hmm. always fun in the credits. And like I, I feel every Christmas horror movie should have a punk cover of a Christmas song in the credits because yeah, it makes you leave the cinema smiling. Um, Ricky, well, something something needed to. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> um, I've got nothing else to say about this. Do you have anything else to say about this, or will we go straight to you pimping your show, buddy? Uh, it's just you know, it it is what it is. It it you know, we talked about it before. This is the type of movie that that has all the things that we say. Yes, this could be a a remake that pulls the goodness out of the original and 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 ups it up a notch instead of remaking, rehashing Texas Chainsaw and all these other ones. But, you know, if you're not going to put the effort into it and you're not going to, you know, really shine on those aspects of what mm. makes the original work 
and you're just throwing some crap in there just to get it out there and said, yes, I did a remake. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. And it, it's a shame because it has the potential, right? Because yeah. the kills in this movie are pretty dang good. Oh, yeah. yeah like that's the, they put the effort in there, and yeah. they put the effort in... And, and some other bits, like with, with some of the casting choices, even though they're sarcastic, I'm down with sarcastic Malcolm McDowell in this movie. Like, as, <laughs> as this kind of cop that sees absolutely no action. Right. So as a result, he's overreacting and he's cynical and he's old. And I like I can I can I can go with that character. I can go with the Santa who's in prison complaining about how life is just shit. I can go with all of that. It's just like you get these little nuggets of something that are really, really interesting against the backdrop of a movie that feels like it was just cynically made, <laughs> like just right. like all the way yeah. right through it. Um, right, yeah, you're, you're, just, you're a busy guy. You do stuff. You've got podcasts oh, yeah. out there. Uh, where can people check out your stuff, buddy? Uh, Legion Podcast and everywhere that you listen to, to shows, you can check out my new show, These Big Nuts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> talking about dealing with uh, elephantitis it's 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 not easy to deal with it's my personal journal and uh if you want to check that out you can <laughs> that's that's where you push the hell mean button right hell mean <laughs> um no seriously i'm like Dun duncan catch his breath uh <laughs> i was the ready for that <laughs> uh I've got Dr. Movie, which mm -hmm. is a, a show that I do that I, I do it while driving down the road. Not do it. I'm doing the podcast while driving down yeah. the road. <laughs> Talking about movies that, uh, you know, the ones that you kind of passed on back in the day in the mom and pop shops. You pick up the box and you're like, yeah, I'll put this down the next time. And all these years later, you watch it and you go, yeah, I'm glad I passed on that one. And uh, <laughs> that's kind of the idea of that. So uh, got that going on. I released three or four episodes a week. I've got Hell Ming still out there. We're trying to regroup and try to do some stuff. But, you know, two busy guys in a cup. It's kind of hard to get together. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it has been a pleasure chatting to you. If I don't speak to you beforehand, I hope you and your family have a phenomenal Christmas. Um, you too, and listeners out there, there's more of these coming out. So I don't know where this one has landed. Uh, the... Uh, the Nasty part of me always wants it to be the first episode. <laughs> it really fuck with you. Um, but we, we never know. All I do know is there's episodes dropping every single day this month from the 1st through to the 24th. So there will be an episode of some description covering something after this. So take care out there. Thanks for listening. And I will speak to you tomorrow.